So today's topic is going to be a semantic kernel. Um, I will tell you what it is and we will slowly take off and try to do some sample codes and where you can go and play with it, like a playground kind of things, and how you can build an app. This is about me. Um, I'm Udaipa Ramachandran. Um, I shortly call me Uday. That's easy, nice and clean. I work for a company called Akimina as a CTO CSO. I'm also an Azure MVP. I've been in this cloud space for, um, you know, since 2011-ish or 10-ish, we call it as, you know, Microsoft. Here's an agenda. We're going to talk about all about the semantic kernel, right? And how, you know, and then uh, how you can get started in the semantic kernel by itself, you know, there's a three major concept and use the one application called Copilot. The concept called plugins, planner, and persona, we will explore that and then we will walk through some core samples. <laughs> So you probably know these are the thundering terms that everybody talking these days, right? So you you heard a lot about vector embedding, okay? Uh, plugins, um, copilot, planner, and persona, uh, prompt engineering, and finally the semantic kernel. Semantic kernel let you let you build as a you know it's a SDK, let you build integrate. Everything on top of that, like plugins and planners and personas, copilot, and that uses the data that you know as a you know stored in a vector embedding, and the prompt engineering, how you can send the most optimized prompt to the AI engine so you can get the right response. <clears throat> so these are the terminology that's take away for today's topic. Um, so the high level semantic kernel is the center of everything. You might probably heard copilot. Right, so the copilot is the term that we've been hearing for more than 12 months. You know, every single day, you go to every LinkedIn, every site, um, um, uh, every site. You know, you see this term, copilot, copilot. Every every company is they bring the product called copilot, right? But here, what we're going to talk about how you can build one by using the semantic kernel. You can build one your own by bringing your own programming language. It can be Shisha, Python, you name it, anything you want. But here, they centralize the framework so it's easy, nice, and fluent. You can integrate with any services, okay, to build one. So it is a SDK. You can integrate with any services like OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, and Hugging Face. Those are the three uh, major services. But you can technically bring your own service. For example, Google, you know, Google AI. Right, bot, uh, AWS, Bedrock, you, you name it, or NVIDIA, you name it, anything you want, you can bring it over there. It's focusing mostly on the, uh, as, a, as an agent, how you can facilitate an agent that, you know, um, effectively agent for a framework, right? It's a framework to build an agent, okay? Um, and again, it's mainly to build the AI application because it's going to have a way to build the plugins, have a way to create a memory, right? I'll tell you what is memory means, how a way to generate a vector embedding, the way to create a, a linking more than one plugins is called a planner and so on, right? So it has that framework built into it. And then of course, it's open source and anybody can go and contribute it. You can download, you can contribute it and play with it. But if you look at the diagram over there, semantic kernel itself uses the plugin. Plugin uses the semantic kernel, right? So it's kind of, it is a center, but it is also a plugin, you know. So it's it's, it's just a framework, okay? Um, the kernel, uh, you know, loads the plugin, kernel talks to the uh, con connector, you know, kernel has the connector, connector talks to the models, and memory is the in you know, a vector database. Somebody store the data, and then uh, so kernel can talk to a trigger action on behalf of you, um, either automated action or maybe you know you go on a click as a as a you know user trigger action, right? Um, that's center of everything. <laughs> now he. A features of the semantic kernel is an agent a agent creation. So what is the agent, right? It's kind of um, isolating the functionality. So if you go, you go to a, you want to book a ticket, uh, ticket booker in an airline's booking site, you know, that's an agent. You need a support. You are using a product. Um, you need some details about the product or you need some help about the product in, you know, that that support engineer is the agent, right? Um, and then uh, you need, um, you know, uh, some sort of science help, you know, you can say you are a science teacher, you're going to ask, you know, that's sign, you know, that's an agent. So you create an agent, isolate the responsibility as an agent. 
prompt engineering is how you interact with the AIs. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you ask something, it's going to give you something, and then you ask something, it's going to give you something, and it, it knows the context of that. And you can integrate with uh, multiple AI services. That's why we can talk about it. You, know, you can use the Jack GPT or the BARD or any 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 uh, generative AI uh, playgrounds, but we're going to talk about how we can build one like that, plus plus, meaning that, you know, Jan GPT is not going to give you everything that you wanted, right? Everything that you have in your disk, or everything that you have in your corporate. Well, we're going to talk all those things, how integrate together, but that can come from the multiple different AIs, okay? <clears throat> uh, AI memory management, as I said before, it's a history, right? So you you open a dialogue and you start talking, okay, what do you, you know? I need something, then it gives you something, and then you take the prompt and come something else. Those are the histories, right? So now how you can put them into a memory as a vector database. The vector database is the concept that these days everybody uses it. It's a vector embedding, which uses the um, uh, cosine algorithm. I have a separate topic, uh, you know, I will schedule later this month, uh, early next month. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about it, how the vector database works, but you know, the, that's a that's a dimension about the data. You want to use under one single keyword Apple, it's still going to create the predefined dimension. Um, that GPT creates the uh, 1,536 dimension, and you can set the dimension how you want. Um, if you need a, if you send a, like a paragraph which contains the hundreds and thousands of words, it's still going to create a 1,536 dimensions, right? So that's how they maintain the consistency and then follow the sequence of the word before and after. You know, and again, it's a responsibility in terms of comments to uh, bios and all those other things. So building an A agent with a semantic kernel, right? So in order to build an A agent, you need uh, three things, plugins, planners, and persona. The persona is what I said. You you define the role. You are a system administrator. You are a support engineer. You are an airline booking counter, right? You are a science teacher or you are a math teacher. That's a persona. And the planner is what it executes the plugins, okay? But that's the all three concepts together is what you can build the agent. So it initializes the kernel to set up the basic uh, framework. In it, it can integrate any model. In this case, uh, the most of the samples that we're going to see today is going to use the Azure OpenAI, which is the uh, on top of the OpenAI. But you do have an option to directly connect it to the OpenAI or go through Azure OpenAI, right? Or the hugging phase uh, model and so on. Um, Again, you could use a plugin. Plugin is the unit of work. You know, you what you want to do in the plugin, right? For example, send an email is a plugin. Uh, you know, uh, summarize my text is a plugin. So that's a unit of work. The plugin in the in the terms that you're going to remember, it's a unit of work. It can be anything. So you bring a unit of work. And the memory and the context management, just to understand, you know, if you go to the uh, chat GPT interface, you keep talking, 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 that it knows until you close it, right? It knows that context because it's sending everything you typed on the page, right? It's sending everything back. That's why it knows. So that's the memory and context management. You know, if you, you know, they use the, you know, how we can build one by using the vector database. But if, it, if you look at the chat GPT, if you look at the, if you put a breakpoint on a network tab, you can see it, but it is not just sending your last question. It may be sending the, uh, since from the beginning, what are the conversation you're talking to it and customization and testings based on your use case. <clears throat> um, cement, so as you said before, there's a three concept you're going to uh, talk today. Plugin, planner, persona. Really persona, we are not building anything. We set the persona. So mainly we're building the plugins and we execute the plugins using the planner and we call it as application called Copilot. Copilot is going to call the pl plan. Planner is going to execute series of plugins. That's all it is, okay? But if you go, if you go to Microsoft site, Copilot or Microsoft.com or anything, there, there's a lot of Copilot terms is going on, which is nothing but series of plugins planned together based on your need or based on the natural language prompt that you're sending to the system, either by text or by voice. If you do by voice, the voice is converted to a text and the text is what sent it to a generative AI. So the generative AI is nothing but they are aware of the text. Um, so what is semantic uh, kernel plugins? Um, 
you know, it's extensible. Again, it's a unit of work. You can integrate with any AI. It is very flexible. Uh, you know, you can use it to only agent. For example, send email. You have the, you know, you build an agent called the booking ticket. We can use the send email. You have another agent called support ticket for the update. You can still use the send email, right? So, so plugin is is more of uh, reusable. Right. If you build a plugin such as send email, it's very usable. Uh, such some people from the company, it's very usable, right? Uh, such their company policy, it's reusable. So, so that's, those kind of things, generic plugins can be more flexible, reusable, and you know it's a custom development. Again, you can build your own and keep it, and you can do it to the community, or you can go to the plugin store and upload your plugins and make money, right? Just like any other app. So you build an app. For the mobile device, you upload the app. It can be a you know simple game app to an educational app to any complex you know business app. You build it, you leave it over there. You know people using it, either you give it a free or you charge it. You make the money, right? Same way, these plugins are now with stores. They have a store where you can put all your plugins, right? And then they integrate with the chat GPT and so on. Which means you can build your own plugin store for if you build an app for your own intranet or your own company or your own product, you can do one. Just like how you see it today in the chat GPT, that's what we're going to see how we can do one. So next thing is that that's a plugin. So now you're unit of work, right? Now you need to plan how to execute that unit of work. That's where the planners come into a picture. Planner is nothing but task automation, right? So sometimes you can say, um, um, you know, I want to find so and so, and then you find the people send so and so, right? That I'm taking a, that as a very simple uh, you know, example for all, you know, for us to understand. But you can go from anywhere from simple example to a much complicated example. You know, shipping an order, uh, you know, um, or approving few things, or approving a vacation. Maybe you know, you can take it anything you want. So you have a unit of work, and how you want to automate that unit of work. It can execute a one one plugin, or you can execute a, execute a sequence of plugins. Okay, uh, <clears throat> you know this is again when you execute sequence of working plugins, it's a like workflow, right? I'm going to execute this plugin first, then thrust this plugin. For example, I want to find a person named Udai, for example, right? And then I want to I want to uh, summarize. I, I want to look up his uh, uh, leftover vacation policies, and then I want to see mail. Now you have like a three. Uh, plugins, right? First plugin to going to find a uh, name. Um, second plugin, you can find the leftover vacations. Third plugin, maybe you can summarize, right? So you, you, they can put code together. And then the third plugin is to send an email or approve a system, or whatever you, you call it as. I'm just giving some examples, right? And it's, it's a highly adaptable, it's integration with any AI model as we talk about. Anything that we talk about today, they are out of the box using the semantic kernel. You can integrate it with uh, Azure uh, OpenAI and OpenAI. Again, Azure OpenAI is built on top of OpenAI. So out of the box, you can use Azure OpenAI or OpenAI. Uh, other models you may have to build your own. Okay, so we'll see it, what are all the models available. <clears throat> The next important thing is the prompt, right? So I said before, uh, find the uh, people, you know, find the person named Udai. Right? That's a prompt, right? If you go to you know Chat GPT and then say write about Udai, it might not tell you anything because it doesn't know who is Udai. I'm not, a, I'm not a celebrity, right? But it is simply four character. There may be a, you know, very obviously there may be a lot of Udai over there, or maybe a lot of John, or maybe any name you pick it up, right? Uh, but you can have a plugin that look at your your own database and then tells you, oh, I found Udai on this day, you know, uh, our own data. So that's come under the category of retrieval augment generation. Again, that's a different topic. You're going to settle for end of this month, but we can find that. That's a prompt, okay? Um, you know, so you go to the chat GPT. Now, this entire PowerPoint I created using a chat GPT. Okay, I just upload the Microsoft documentation and then I I, I send a prompt to uh, create a highlight, you know, 10 slides. Give me a minimum of 10 slides. Okay, give me outline, then expand all the 10 slides. You did not expand it pretty fully, but any of this content you see here, I did not create it. It's all created by ChatGPT. Okay, we, we, we are going to see the samples, how we can build the similar application, but we're going to use that LLM model, but we can bring some custom data, just like how I upload my document and ask them to write the PowerPoint. We can bring our own data. That's a retrieval documentation, and they're going to use the data and bring it in. But sometimes we pass in the data. Okay, use this and use this data from this link, and then give me something. Okay, so 
that's the prompt. So you you know, so you might have heard a lot of times in the last years, uh, you know, the prompt engineering is being a hot role in the market, right? So that's the prompt engineering. How effectively or quality you send your prompt to uh, uh, LLM model is very important, you know, uh, to get the accurate answer or close to accurate answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. A um, lot of people is not going to train the model, but you know, most applications that we, I see today are we try and build one. We don't need to train the model, but we can get away with it, um, a RAG model and with uh, you know proper prompt engineering. So if you look at the diagram over here, um, so what is a prompt, right? That's pretty pretty you know self-explanatory diagram. Prompt is what you hear. LLM is your our our brain, you know, it processes it. And then the response is our mouth, right? So you ask me something, that's a prompt. And I, you know, whatever you ask, hey, what is your name? That's a prompt. And I process, my name is Uday. I'm going to tell you. So that's the response. That's how the that's a very simple way of understanding prompts. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to talk about is we are talking about here is the kernel memory and empening. Empening is nothing but um, vectors, right? I, as I said before, it's a, it's a dimensional vector. You take a word called apple, and a classic search term, if you do apple, you, know, you have a document, you need to look for apple. The way that it ranked is you know, how many times the apple word come into the document, right? How many people search that word apple and so on. But now it's a vector, so it's giving you a dimension how they store this word apple, okay? So for the word Apple, which contains or five, five characters, it's going to give you a 1536 dimension of floating numbers that's anywhere from minus one to one, okay? Um, zero is for no, no correlation. One, you know, one is for you know, identical, minus one is for negative, okay? So upside down, uh, yeah, completely opposite. Minus one is for completely op opposite. Zero is for no match. One is for full match. And the numbers is going to be between one and minus one. Um, okay, the higher the value is the better the match. You know, if you don't see like a perfect one, I never seen perfect one, but you see like a 0 0.8, 0 0.9, you know, maybe a 0 0.9, 8, 9, 9, 9. The higher the number, the better it match. Lower the number, the better it's going away for the match. Okay, so it, it's the memory is what the uh, embedding is the way, is the value that's stored in the memory. That's how we retain the uh, retain, retain the history when you talk about the systems. There's a lot of embedding storage what we have to use when you use the uh, uh, semantic framework. As you said before, right? You go to chat GPT, you type something, it stores that conversation, right? So those are going to some database somewhere, right? So they store that as embeddings. Uh, you know, improved understanding uh, because it, it it has the dimension attached to it. You know, one dimension may be a color, other other dimension may be the sequence. You know, but that many dimension they split your language again. If it's a one word or one paragraph, we're still going to create the same number of dimensions, and for the consistency reason, you know, you cannot expect. Hey, I have an apple. I have one thousand five hundred thirty-six dimension, but I have this big paragraph. Well, you still get a 1536 dimension. So how it's resolved is algorithm. Okay, so there, you know, and then if you see the number, the number in the, the floating vectors, that will be a um, lot of different over there. <clears throat> of course, it's a performance. Um, there's a lot of internet search today, like Bing, Google, they all use the vectors. But again, that's a, another topic that I want to hold it for, you know, end of this month or early next month. We'll talk about it. <clears throat> next thing is the uh, co-pilot, right? Copilot is the application. Um, that's the application you're building that's going to involve like in planners, prompt, memories, vectors, and everything, right? Um, real time assistance, chat better provides real time assistance, um, you know, for the conversation. You can customize the way you want, enhance the user interaction, you know. So um, you have a copilot to search something to you, you know, internet. Okay, that's a copilot. You know, you, you, you look for something. On the chat GPT, now you have the copilot, which is the fully baked in assistant. You can invoke this, it's going to give you something. Say the Microsoft gives the three copilot, right? One is the M365 copilot, which helps you to um, you know, create a PowerPoint or build in a document or give a summary. You know, you can, while we're in the uh, O365 suite, in this case, Office or Excel or PowerPoint, you can ask anything. You send a prompt, it's going to tell you or help you. That's a copilot, M365 copilot. 
you can also co-pilot on the windows okay uh, i don't know you can open it here so the windows co-pilot yeah, it opens another window i cannot move it some weird reason uh so windows copilot is going to give you like some of the windows command for example you can say turn off my computer or turn off my computer three hours from now or open some app okay something like that that's the windows copilot and uh, there is a git copilot which is the uh, technically uh, you know coding helper right so these days if you are not using for your coding most likely you are wasting a lot of time you know in in our lab you know i, you know, I encourage everyone to use the git copilot to do the code do the coding more more much faster than before you know i you know, i recently started a project on a mobile lab i was an android i had no experience on i was an android but with uh, with the help of um, git copilot i was able to crack it and i able you know uh, to be a moderate experienced person uh, but without that i don't think i would have able to done anything right <clears throat> a seamless integration user feedback incorporation uh, um, you know so if you have a feedback you can take it you know you have the data and then incorporate it but that comes into training but um, if you capture all the feedback in your internal system as a raw a rag or a g then you can do something to the data too <clears throat> All right. So this is the this is the higher level architecture architecture, right? So you you create series of tasks. This is what I said, right? You know, you send a you know you you ask something, you send something. The kernel has the context. The context uses the memory, and then creates a plan. The plan contains one or more plugins. Okay. In this case, graph is the plugin, and then uh, you know some semantic function. It can be anything. Some of the out of the box. So plugins are also called uh, semantic functions. Okay. Uh, it's called function executing. Uh, and then some native functions. So you can create your own plugins too, right? And then it executes all those things and then do that. So in this case, please create a series of tasks to complete marketing project. Once you are done, please summarize them and send them to my team. That's a flow. And then it's going to send what is the output on the copilot is going to say, here is the email with the summary task in it and send it. This is automated tasking, right? So you're asking them to do it. But if you don't want to do automation, you want to bring it for your review, but you can bring it for your review and then say, okay, do it, then you can do it, okay? So I know we talked about it. Again, I, I highlight these things over and over. There's three things you, you learn, two main things. One is a plugin, plan up, okay? Persona is how you set the context. You know, he's a teacher, or he's a or he's a support engineer, or he's the a, a ticket counter a representative, and so on. Persona, plugin, planner, persona, copilot is the application, and semantic kernel is the framework to do all those things. That's it. Okay, and now you can interface with any AI. It can be the Azure AI or Azure Open AI or Azure Open AI or Hugging Face or Google or whatever AI you want to use it. But now how we can get started, right? Semantic kernel comes with uh, three programming language supported. Surprisingly, C Sharp is you know they they know. I know when you talk about in this in this um, AI world, a lot of times that we see you know, demos and everything is a Python, right? And often time I used to scare, do I have to learn Python? But it's not a bad idea to learn Python, but I, can I leverage my existing skill set? But this is the first time I start seeing it. This framework in C Sharp, it's either staying ahead or competing with the Python. They have more. We will see it in uh, some slides, you know, later. It's pretty cool. You know, you have a C Sharp framework that you can build an application. A lot of applications built in C Sharp. You have a website, you want to add some copilot functionality. Now you can do it. Just download the semantic corner framework, start building it. Right? It can be anything. <clears throat> hello world, starting from the hello world. Uh, the SDK is available C Sharp, Python, and Java. So those are three languages, and they have three language SDKs. The majority of the functionality is supported in C Sharp. This is the link. If you go to the semantic kernel and we will visit that link, and you can see, you know, all the you can download and play with it. You know, as, again, as I said before, it's open source. You know, more than come to contribute and then improve the community. And then the starters, there's a this, we're going to run some samples from the starters. The starters also includes the uh, includes the test ground. You know, I would uh, you know it's it's the same as the chat GPT, but they give you you know, you know you can download and run it on a local system. And if you like it, you can take that code, which is MIT license. You can, you know, you make some changes and you can make it your own. Um, you know, either you make it your own and, you know, sell it or do whatever you want it. You, you will see it. But the, I will also tell you what is the advantage of it. 
you don't have to wait for chat gpt to release any features now you have that same exact uh, interface running on your local machine you can build anything that instead of waiting for some vendor to provide you okay so that level of starter codes are there um, then there is some uh, some playground codes that you can go play with it. So we're going to see a lot of samples from this link because I'm a C sharp developer. I'm not a Python developer. I'm not a Java developer, but I can understand. But we're going to see a C sharp samples from here. I took the samples. I put them on a C sharp project. I will walk through that um, in terms of three contexts: um, plugin, planner, uh, memory, and uh, memory and storage. And we will also run these samples. Okay, so it's a little bit. Of, uh, I will walk through what's the problem of running these samples, and we will build some some custom planner, and then see how we can work on it. But while running these samples, we understand the individual concept. While running these samples, we understand the full fun full functionality, the entire applications. All right. So this is the these are the supported services: text generation, text embedding, chat completion, image generation. Look at that. So right. So. Those are available in C sharp, but Python in Java, um, Tally is not supported. Um, endpoints, you know, again, if you see the refresh, it's a coming soon. Uh, ex no, right? Uh, as you can see, it endpoints, open AI, Azure open AI, uh, you know, out of the box. It's all out of the box, but you can bring custom your own on the framework. Okay, so you can write your own your own um, your own. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can call your own AI endpoint just by implementing the builders. <clears throat> um, core plugin, as you can see, you know, there is a text memory plugin, conversation summary plugin, file IO, HTTP plugin, math in text, you know, there are some plugins over there. And, uh, you know, then again, MS Graph, a um, lot of people use a graph these days because all the data you work with the M365, you can query from the graph. We have the application that uses the graph 100%. Uh, again, you know that's available in a short document and data loading plugins like a PDF. You know you can upload these files to them and then ask something, right? And those things are available in a short and open AI web search plugins, Bing and Google. That's available in a short text chunker, so chunking the text, you know, for the efficiency of delivery. Uh, you know there is a uh, coming soon. Support of planners. Planners comes with how you can execute all those things. There is a Plan object model, how you create, but when you execute, you know, you can do an action planner is kind of, I want to do that action, right? Um, sequence of planner is, I want to do A, B, C, okay? Likewise. Um, stepwise planner is, I want to do a step A, then it will suggest a step B, then it will suggest a step C, okay? Uh, and you can see the diagram, what is available in, in C sharp again, it has the uh, majority of supports. Um, some connectors out. I mean, again, these are all out of the box connectors. But you can build your own your own connector if you want to, right? A search connector. Um, you know, our next topic will dive into that. Uh, Chroma, DuckDB, Milvers, you know, Pinecone, one of the popular um, vector database. Uh, Postgres, Quadrant, Redis, SQLite, and Eliot. And then now we'll, we'll look at some demos, and then I will show that it's the big application. Then you can take away and build it your own. So this is very simple. I have a settings. In the settings class, I only have three property: deployment name, endpoint, and key. Right? Endpoint is going to be how you create the endpoint. Is if you use uh, Azure Open AI, um, we use both. Uh, open AI as well as the Azure Open AI, but in the application that we build, we always want to use Azure Open AI. The reason is it gives the RBAC control, role-based access control, it to secure the system. Um, so you have to create this one, right? So Azure Open AI, and then go create it. If you don't have, it may ask you to go through some sign-up process, and you complete that. But I created a long back, so I'm not going to do it. So I have this, okay? And here you need to enable some models. Okay. So you go back to the model deployments and manage deployments. So there is chat, chat completions, Dolly, and other some. But you can add a model, right? So if you want to create a new deployment model, create a new deployment. And then you select the model which is which is available to your subscription. Okay, so my subscription, these are the things available. Um, GPT-4 is available. 
GPT-3.5 Turbo, and then the embedding ADA. Embedding ADA is used to create, create a vector, 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 vectorization of the input, text input. GPT-4, obviously, we all know that. GPT-3.5, obviously, we all know that. So these are the three models that mostly we will be using for our demo. <clears throat> okay, other models, of course, we can read it. Uh, but the key takeaway is embedding ADA is for vector database. Uh, if you use the uh, if you use the as in OpenAI or OpenAI and um, three five for uh, generative text, GTP four again for generative text. <clears throat> okay, this is the first step you complete. The second step you complete is you create a service. Of course, if you go back to the I'm not you know I think the keys are masked. Okay, so this is my endpoint. Um, you know you have the keys and you, know, you need to know the endpoint. You need to know the keys and then you you copy it and put them in the application. Okay, that's how you have to do. So I go back to my application. It's over here. Um, I, I stored all those very key. But if you use an open AI, they give something called arg ID, which is another random numbers, uh, random string. You need to have that arg ID as well. So how do you begin, right? So we talked about a few links here. So let's go the links and then see what is in that links. Okay, so I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to go to this link. And so going to go to another uh, link here. Okay, so we're going to we're going to run these samples and everything that we're going to run here under the darknet. Okay, <clears throat> I'm running the samples under the darknet. Okay. So if you look at it. Uh, Chat GPT plugins, you know, solutions, and you know, there's some samples, but there is also a, a you know, once you download this, how you can run also you, but bear with me. Let's run this samples over here. Um, again, this I created a plugin demo. Okay, so we're going to see the plugin. So, first thing what you do, you just have to install some NUGET packages. Okay, so you go back to the NUGET packages, and uh, I already installed it because this is the user group meeting, we don't want to waste time. So if you look at all the installed, um, it'll give you the list. You're going to install the uh, semantic kernel, which will which has the which will also install the core and the connected or open AI. And you can install the handlebars. That's how we're going to do the prompt engineering. The prompt engineering uses the handlebar templates. Okay. Uh, the plugin start core and then the memory. Okay. And so on. Again, this is pretty straight. And then this is for creating uh, some image. Uh, this is for uh, this uh, API just to call the uh, website. You, know, you need something, right? So you're looking for something and open this website and find the information. Now you might uh, go to the chat GPT and type, find or write the summary of this website. You give the website, it'll give you the summary. How it knows, the same way. So they have the, now you can use this go to write your own. Um, and that's some example. So you go look for Microsoft Semantic Kernel, you load it. That's why you load it. You don't see any of the using here, so I, I put all the using so over here. Okay. Now, first thing you do, kernel.create builder. Then we have this key, uh, which we set it over the program because this is what we're going to call. We said to use it, you know, again, this is just a sample. This is not a production code. Um, you know, excuse for all the, uh, all the quality. Uh, <clears throat> And then that's how you do it. Build a dot add as row a chat completion, and then you give that deployment name, endpoint, and key. If you need to insert a logging, you, you can insert this way, right? So these days we are, we, you know, if you use a dot net um, six, seven, eight, you are most likely to use the extension dot logging and dot ilogger. Um, that's how you you insert the logging. Okay. Now it's a prompt comes in. Remember I said a handlebar. That's how the prompt is used to here. This is a handlebar syntax. Handlebar is the uh, it's a templating engine. That's how it uses the syntax. If you around, you can find out. So this 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 is a very simple prompt. What we have is whatever the input, and in, uh, too long didn't read. You know, short it out. Right. That that's the thing. This is the input, and this is we want online whatever it is. Okay. But now, this is the builder. Now, what we said, two things we said, right? Plugin planner. Now we're going to create a plugins. Okay. So the, this is how I create plugin also called a functions. Okay. Create a function from the prompt. So the, here is a prompt. Right. And then to this as the uh, parameters. So max token 1000 is, you know, when, when any time that comes out of the GPT output, uh, like a, 
the A generate A output. It can only contain the 1000 tokens. Uh, the temperature is the, how the randomness is going to work, and then the uh, top P, how you can uh, modify the, uh, the, the you know, how to add the, um, I, I forgot, the, like similarities on, onto that, okay? All right, so now that's we call it as the summarize. So whatever comes in, I'm going to give some input, whatever comes in, and we call it as summarize function. But that function is created by using the prompt that we gave over here. That's a prompt is going to use, and that prompt contains the three parameters: max tokens 1000, uh, temperature is randomness, how we don't want to be, and the tap of the parameter. Now we have some sample text here, right? First law, thermodynamics, and some sample text, don't worry about it, copy paste. Now, how you can execute that plugin? Our function. You're going to execute that plugin by using the invoke async. Okay. Now I have a summarize. With this, you know, this entire thing might not make sense, but when I run a full application, it will make sense. <laughs> so I'm going to invoke a kernel and uh, the invoke async. I have the function called the summarize. I'm going to summarize it. And that looking for the parameter called input. So I'm going to give the input. Got it? And then whatever the output that's going to execute, that's going to send to this prompt send this message to a GPT, okay? And then display the output. Same thing, we're going to invoke summary, which, which is looking for the prompt. Again, remember, we said that create from the prompt. So this is what it is. The prompt is looking for input as a value. So you're going to pass input as a text to, and it's going to call the GPT with this prompt, it putting this value, sending this value, and GPT, is going to return your response. The response is too long when this is going to say online DL, DR is too long. It didn't read it and it's going to come out of it. All right, let's stop this level and then let's run it. We see. Sometimes you don't believe how fast this time goes. Kind of open by no, okay. So it should be running soon somewhere. That I'm, I'm running it. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming over here. Okay. So if you look at the output over there, and then you know, it, you know. This is this is a long string, right? Even though we said the thousand words and it, it summarized it for us, but you know, take away concept is it did some work, okay? But if you want to write it something different, for example, you know, summarize the following text and write all in caps, and you know, there is another example, you can do that as well. Uh, but now that's a one sample. So you have a you create a function using the prompt. The second sample we're going to run is you're going to create a function using a text, okay? So how this text is, you create a files here. So in this case, it has a plugins. So it's going to go to the console app samples and then it look at the plugins, right? And then it's going to look at the fun plugin because we just going to look at one thing here, right? So it go to the plugin and then it's going to go to the fun plugin. This is how we give, and then we look at the, uh, um, you know, we're going to call the joke here, but it is going to create everything underneath. What we're going to call a few lines down here, we're going to call the function called the joke. So now we have three three functions over here: excuse, joke, and limerick. So we have three functions over, three plugins over here, right? So if you look at the joke, it has some prompt. Again, instead of putting that string inside the C sharp code, you just now keeping it in a separate file and you fill in the config config dot json. That's uh, that's the um, convention. You know what I mean? This is the convention. You have something, and then you keep the config dot json. That's the your parameter, right? Prompt parameter. So you can say max token. Now remember, we were hard coding it over here, but now you can use that. The second way of creating the plugins. What are the values, and then the input variable? Okay, and the input variable name is going to be input. You know, and then use the style and output it. And then you can exp you know, I'm going to refer you where all these samples are that you can download and explore it. But for now, let's move on. PSP running all the time. So it's going to load the directory. So it's going to load all the functions, which is three functions over here. Uh, you know, um, 
import plugins from the import prompt directory. Okay. And then we're going to have arguments, right? So we said that prompt contains the argument input. So we're going to pass in the input, which is this, but you can give it anything you want. You know, we pass that as an argument and we're going to invoke it. We know we invoke it, but we know that there is a joke function. So we, we name it. But if you don't know, we don't know what to give, right? If you have one function, you can simply call it. But the planner, when you go to the planner demo, the planner will resolve and then it will tell you what to call. But for now, you know, we have three functions. We manually invoking the joke function, right? And then we're passing the argument back in. There's no difference between this and this. But this one, we creating the function from the folder, right? And then we're going to run it. It worked. And then if you want to see the result, you can hover over here. Why did T-Rex? So the, the main point of this, this template is, you know, write an exact joke, email story about topic flow, generator, workplace, family safe, no system, racism, R R by us and by Grabby. Use the input and do it. It did exactly what you want. OK, so we uh, we type the uh, print the result. We go. So now. <clears throat> Next demo, what we're going to see here is the history. So you start interacting, right? You go to chat GPT, you type something, you know, you you, you ask something, it give something, you ask something, you give something, right? It, it's a, it's in a loop until you close, right? So the entire history is traveled back and forth. So how you can do that? So you're going to have the uh, you know execution settings. In this case, we're creating a different uh, function. Um, you know, we create a function prompt, which you're going to create from the escape prompt. In this case, we didn't change. We here is the escape prompt. The escape prompt contains chatbot can have a conversation with you with you about any topic. So we have the history, we have the user input. Okay. And then whatever the chatbot is going to say, it's going to say it over here. All right. So we create a function using the prompt and execution settings. Remember, here we have set an inline. And here we use the use the file. But here now we have a separate class outside. Okay, just the three different styles of creating very simple plugins. Uh, you know, <clears throat> then step through it, and then we have the you know creating an argument. History is going to be history. Right now there is no history. We haven't asked anything. Hey, I'm looking for a book suggestion. That's the first thing user ask, right? The user argument is going to be user input. That's what you have it over here. Uh, okay, so user that is the input is going to be. And then you're going to invoke the function. There's no difference. Exactly what do you scan under invoke function? In this case, a chat function is assigned to that and chat function dot invoke async kernel and then the arguments, right? So that's going to be the bot, bot answer. The bot answer is going to be uh, okay, sure, uh, what generate, right? Based on your prompt, that's a prompt, right? It's going to ask you something. Um, and then now if you look at the history, that's a history, right? Now you can put that back into the history. This is all happening when you go through the JetGPT interface. This is all happening when you go to the bot dot you know Google dot com. This is all happening. Uh, you know it's going to put the history and then you know write the history. If you look at it, yeah, that's the history we have it. But when you run more, we will see the more history. And now this can be this can be moved to a separate function, or you can use the uh, <coughs> um, a func delegate, right? So in this case, you know it is a func delegate. I just copy paste the code, but if you want to, you can move to the another function, and you need to pass all the reference parameter. But it is easy to to run as a func delegate, so you don't need to pass all the reference parameters. <laughs> okay, so we have the func delegate. What the func delegate does, it, it does the arguments or the user input is going to be input, and then it executes it, and then it puts the result and then history back. So the history is keep adding it. Because how? Because the history is equal to history plus result. So every time you do something, it's going back, right? Uh, and that is put back to the argument of history. That argument of history and sent back to the uh, GPT engine. Okay. So how do we know that? So we're going to run it. I'm going to set a breakpoint over here and run everything. And these are all going back and forth to open it as it open you bring it over there. So if you look at it, yeah, these are all coming. You now ask something, question, but you know. You got the concept. We don't have to go everything what it does. But if you look at the history now, uh, we'll have the huge history printed over here. Okay, that's the history we've been interacting. That's how the GPT works. All right, any question in this demo? I'm going to go to plan of next. All right, next one is the planner. <clears throat> right, I'm going to go comment this code for a second. As I said before, planner is the uh, you know 
is the orchestrator to execute sequence of plugins. OK, Planner itself, it does nothing, but it is going to invoke some plugins. Planner is going to ask GPT what I can do in this context. This is the data. It's going to tell this is what you can do. So it's going to tell these are all the things given to me. I, they given to me sent email. They given to me book a ticket. They given to me clean my car. They given to me turn off the light. But the user is asking, turn off the light. What should I do? GPT tells you, oh, there you go. You turn off the light. Go turn off the light. That's it. That's the plan. Planner, ask and execute. So we're going to go up and look at the planner demo and run it. <clears throat> Again, these four lines, there's no difference. You've seen it before. We're going to go back to the plugin directory. Again, you know, samples and plugins, we load all the plugins over here. Um, and then import plugins. You already seen it. So in this case, what we're going to do, I'm going to run it. So if you look at it, we we you know we we're going to go to the plugins directory. It, it processed it, and then we're going to import the summarized plugin, which is over here. Then you're going to put the right plugin, which is over here. Yeah. Okay, that plugin has the multiple things inside. So those are the two plugins that we we imported. Okay, and here is the prompt comes in tomorrow's online stay. What can I do? Significant others, and then now you call the planner is. Yeah, handlebar planners, right? That is where your handlebar reference come in. That's a handlebar planner. And then you ask planner.create plan. You pass the kernel and then you ask, right? So it takes the it takes the ask, what you're asking, and you give the kernel. Kernel contains this data. If if none of this plugin loaded to the kernel, what the kernel will do? Kernel has no knowledge of your plugin existence. So it's going to say, I'm not finding any details, right? That's what the example I gave you. Write about UDA, UDAI, right? But it didn't find anything. If I load a plugin into the kernel, it's going to use that. Okay, I did not find anything, but I have the plugin that tells me find a person. Okay, so now it's going to use that plugin and give you the data. Same exact way. So we loaded those plugins. You know, you ask it, and it's going to use one of the plugins to give a data. Occasionally, it can do wrong thing. Uh, again, that's why. The generate a evolving, right? So, you know, in another case, but you can trust 100% of the result until unless you 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 tested enough to trust the system. Okay. Um, you know, so so you, that is a thing, and then you, you create the original plan, uh, action plan in this case. Okay. And then we have the prompt. So now we have the plugins loaded to the kernel. We have the planner. Now the prompt comes in. So those two, if you are app, if you are building application, you you the application developer controls the kernel, loading the plugin, creating the plan. The end user is the one controlling the prompt, but we facilitate that. We developer facilitate that through programming. That's the programming. Route. So so if you give this interface, you know we going to enter something, right? That you know that's what is happening here. Ask. So now we have the prompt. That is my. Cursor is dead. And we did the crazy thing. Oh, maybe timed out, I guess. But we will walk through and run one thing. And then what we do, we ask this planner, right? So create a planner for this ask. Okay. Oh, there's two things we are doing here. Okay. So we just have to run it. It's gone. Where is it? Let's run it again. It happens. It's not done. We already gone through it. Let's put a breakpoint over here. School dot right down. What? In the internet. Who play the internet? These are there, right? Yeah, I know what happened. 
right, never mind. We'll move on. But you get the concept. But I would show it now, a uh, full application of how it works. So now you have another planner. You create it, and then you modify the input and display it. I have no idea why it's not executed right now. I don't see any breakpoint stop either here. <clears throat> okay, so now let's move on to the third demo. Embedding demo, right? So I'm going to go back to my program, and then I comment this. And then I enable this one. I run that. <clears throat> oh, 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 wait. <laughs> Break points. There are some breakpoints. <clears throat> So as you said before, like this is this is the easiest one. So in the first demo, when you talk about the plugin chat history, right? We said like you know chat history plus e equal to chat history, right? History is equal to plus e equal to result, right? So we were adding the result into a chat history and then passing it to all, all those things over there. But if you want to store that somewhere, that's why when you go to G chat GPT, it stores it, right? Somewhere it stores it. That's going to be the vector database. In this simple demo, they use the volatile memory store, but you can use the Cosmos store or search index store or ready store, whatever store you want to use it. Um, you can use it over there. Okay. But again, let's walk you through over here. In order to generate the embedding, you have to use the uh, text embedding add of 002. That gives you the vector of the word or paragraph that you're going to send it. So once you send to that, you know why this is. Okay, I'll, that's not all. What happened to that? We'll review it. Okay, so so that's okay. We create the instance text embedding. I put an endpoint and then key, and then we set a set a store where we're going to write all those all those vectors. Okay, that's where we're going to write a vector. Then we we simulate something over here, right? So my name is this, and I do this, this, this. And now what happened, everything is created as the embedding and stored over there. But now I ask a question. Now the question is. When we search, right? <clears throat> this is the question. The question is going to search on the memory, and then it returns the data. But again, it's going to it's going to search on the uh, on the embedding. This is this will be converted to a, a vector, and this stored as a vector. So it's going to search the vector into the vector, not the apple into like not the text into text. So this will become a vector. This will become a vector. And then this converts into a vector and ask there, and then it, it outputs over there. And you know, some other examples in a text memory plugin, same way. You have the recall function and so on. It's a function prompt. And again, you, you tweak that one and then you ask it where it traveled and it's going to return it. But again, this is a different text memory plugin, but that one is the uh, volatile memory store. Okay. So we use the plugin to do this, the second part of the demo. And then the last part of this demo is to have some sort of chatting. You know, again, this is demo. Just run it and then see how the memory builder works. You know, you you load it, um, text data, and then send the data and then search it and then display it. But the key takeaway on this is everything that you you store is going to be a vector. Everything is searched, converted to vector, and then retrieved from the from the store as a you know as a vector and displayed it to the string. But the store will contain the uh, contains the original string and the vector string. When the vector string match, the corresponding original string is returned. Uh, <clears throat> let me see why these demos are not working. This is the breakpoint over here. And now it comes. Stop. I think it's loading, and then it's not happening. Maybe some problem in the Azure services. Yeah, but you got the concept. Now let's run the full application. So the full application is going to come from. So the, the sample that I ran is from here. Okay. So the another way that you can run, if you don't have Visual Studio and all those things, but you want to go through like, um, um, how do you call it, this tool, like that, yeah, Polyclot, you can do that. Let me give you one second. I will load using the uh, Studio, and then I will run it. I'll show you how to run it, but you can run it at a pure great time. If you download the samples, you will have it over here and open this folder in uh, 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 Visual Studio Code. I have everything installed. All you need is the .NET ATSDK installed, 
and then you know once you have the once you have the visual studio code loaded you need to install a pipeline that's all you need okay so now the same example i ran everything is from here so i'm going to go this file when it loads it's loading it just takes some time so it's just detecting the kernel so once it's detecting the kernel it'll tell you what kernel is going to run and i'm going to ask them to run the internal kernel that kernel is different than the semantic kernel we're talking about don't get confused <coughs> Uh, okay, so it's open the data interactive. Now I can run this. So I'm going to say use think, right? You can see that um, it's running. If it completes, then no problem. Then you can proceed to the second statement. Just because that is spinning, I believe this is also spinning. I'm going to stop execution. Let's wait for that to be done. But you get the, you get the concept. I'm not going to wait here. So, oh, it is it is ready. So let's run it. It's kind of interesting why it's taking this long. I'm oh, still loading. Give it up 30 seconds. Oh, it says the analysis is a language server sort of client wouldn't create a connection to the server. You guys able to hear me? You're still there in the meeting, Dan? Uh, yes, say that again. Oh, okay. It, it is connecting. So it's run the command, right? And then you continue on, run one at a time, um, and then you open down other samples and then keep running it. Okay, this is the one way that you can run. The only requirement is you need to have Visual Studio code. You need to have a .NET 8 SDK. Don't forget it. .NET 8 SDK. Once you have it, you can add the extension polyglot. It will prompt you to install it, and you're good to go. So you can run all the samples one at a time. So you start from here. There is a file called the settings.json, which I'm not going to open it. You put the credentials the same way we did on the other series of samples. But that project I created by copying this code. That's it. OK, so if you if you download the download the files from here, you have Visual Studio, .NET AD SDK, uh, and then open it, install the polyglot, and you're good to go. You just start running, you know, either you can run all or just run one at a time and then see what it is. If you see a clean check, you're good. There is no error. And then keep running, continue to run, OK? That's all. Um, I, I have one question. Um, <clears throat> how scalable is a planner when dealing with, like, large data sets? or complex. These are, <clears throat> I need to close this file. I don't know why I'm trying. Give me one second. Uh, there is, there is a, always a limitation how much data you can send it, right? So you are not going to send like a 10, you know, you cannot send 10 gig, but there is a limit, I believe. I forget the token limit. There is a, there is a size on the token you can send it. Okay. So how to calculate the token? So if I am here, it's kind of four token. Why space? And here, it's kind of four token or five token. There is a site you can check how many tokens. Okay, there is a tokens allowed on every request, right? So that many tokens is what you can send. So now back to your question, the large set, you're not going to send to the entire database to a jet GPT. So in, in other gentleman's example, I want to see the product I bought, bought last week or last month, right? So you're going to, you're going to fetch that the user's data, okay? So for example, Dan's last week purchase, right? So we're going to say, give all the data that purchased by Dan. So it's going to give me maybe, you know, um, I should have coding it here, maybe like over 2000 tokens, okay? Which is about 2000 kilobytes of, yeah, not 2000 kilobytes, maybe 100 KB of data, right? Something around that. So 2000, here they use the term tokens, 2000 tokens. So you're going to take that 2000 tokens and back to the GPT. So your large, large, large database stays away from this context. You're going to attach to the user context or the application context. You are not going to send everything. There is a limitation on how many tokens you can send back to a system, prompt, part of the prompt. Is that answers to your question? Uh, yeah, thank you. 
All right. So what we're going to do here, um, I told you that you know that this sample is coming from this site here. Okay. You download. Uh, I will walk you through how you can play it, and it's a nice. Uh, you can build your own product. But now I'll show you that some sort of mock product that I'm going to show you. But we're building a new product. Uh, but I'll show some mock product what we've been building. Okay. So now to this one, I will minimize this for a second. Is that Yeah, this window is a bit too tight, yes. Yeah. All right, so you're going to close this one. And, oh my God, it's gone. And then, you're going to go back to here. You're going to stop everything. You will run it again. You're going to see here. Come to see. That my job, yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about three projects here. First one is, this is the JatGPT like interface. You know, this again, it's the MIT license. You can go download and modify, it, you know, do something, and then you can you can call it as your own product. <clears throat> so we're first going to run that, okay? The second product that we're going to run is, and so is doing this today. Okay, so again, I, I took their code, I renamed it to this. Uh, so we're going to call some web APIs, how to host these web APIs and so on. Because because you are you are you are a web web project. Oh, one second, I think I can close and review. The dialogue is not going great. Let me reopen this. Make sure the display option is set to large. It's connecting. <clears throat> to what I wanted to. It's because of the screen sharing, I guess. Um, it still shows my desktop, but we'll play with it. Uh, <clears throat> so, we have the plugin web API. I, I mean, if you look at it, you know, all the art model controllers, extensions, and hubs, models, plugin services, storage, and everything. It's all coming from the Microsoft side. You can go and download it it's over there, right? That's the one that you are, you are, you are front end that we are talking about here. Let's keep this way. Let's get this way. The front end we're talking about over here is going to talk to that endpoint. And then we have um, some some JAT GPT function running somewhere. Okay, so that's how we're going to load from our front end, right? We can run everything in a one go. It's going to be a monolithic application, but we need a we need the Microservices. So I'm going to I'm going to run this plugin somewhere, but that uses some endpoint. Okay, so we need to run this so our front end can communicate. So I'm going to go with debug start instance. Um, you know, when it runs, it will come some endpoints. Okay, so those are all the endpoints. It has it. So that's why it's going to call. You know, chat and all those things and communications. Now I'm going to go back to. Uh, the code here and then solution explorer i'm going to call this one so before i call we have a we have a two uh, function we return get people right don't worry about again you know it's a demo code don't worry about quality so my production code is not going to look like this so we have three parameters defined open api operation open api parameter that's that's a function we call it as a get people text function and then we have we take a one parameter is called people and then we respond to text plus text okay <clears throat> And we take some inputs, uh, you know, I'm, I'm this, 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 you know, in the case, I, again, I hard code in the case comes the wood, I, this is the data I'm going to run. This is where you're going to do some sort of REST APIs, okay? Uh, also, other samples that I have. And then we're going to call it. 
Now, the second function we have is send an email, right? So if there is an email comes in, you know, just go and send an email to this user and so on. Uh, and then the third function we, we have here is such product. We have something that runs on this endpoint. There is a service that runs on this endpoint. You take the information that we are passing it in and then search the product over there. That product uses the vector query search, search index and so on. The, bar, the takeaway concept. This is what happens when you when you click faster. And this what is it time before it ready? So one is running or oh, plugin endpoint. We're run. we gonna run this one. Start new and start. The third one is a product service that uses the vector database. We will run that one. All running. Then now our website is also running. Let's stop the website. This this interface will not load if if the um, the copilot project is not running. Okay, so that's this. I want to talk about something. Uh, write about a company company Akimira. This is going to go to a GPT model. It's not going to execute anything. So it's going to look at it. You know, it it writes against okay, some sort of company, right? Um, Sort it in twenty words. Okay. So this is the history, right? So it, it, it's all going back and forth, all in the history words. Now I'm saying right about food I okay. apologize. I don't know any information, but how do you find the I here? That's a technology called plugins. A lot of plugin. I have a custom plugin. When you enable that runs on HTTP colon localhost colon. 7071, I believe. We'll find it out in a second. Yeah, so it runs over there. It uses this file, add a plugin, close, and I need to enable it. Okay, enable. So if you go back to here, those are all ones, the one of the endpoints. I know this window is a little weird right now, but trust me, it's all running somewhere here. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to close it. Um, now, now I'm going to say, Write about today. The same exact prompt. Oh, it knows something about me, right? It says, okay, call the text people tags, summarize about the things, and then send an email. So it thinks it can do all three things for me. I can say no, cancel the plan, or I can say remove all the plans. So I can say, no, you don't need to send an email, just summarize about him. Yes, delete that step and then proceed. Okay, so it gives me that, right? So that's that's about me. That data is coming from my own database. So we had a vector database. You can say um, write about the product as you know, right? If you asked before we load in the plugin, it most likely go to the JetGPD LLM model and bring about the Azure. But now we loaded a plugin. It's called a product plugin. And we set the keyword product as you, it intelligent enough to understand I am asking to execute a plugin. It says, okay, I found a two plugins for you. 
one plugin is a search a product. Uh, so one plugin which contains the two steps, search a product and you know, and then summarize the product. I can say is proceed, and it's going to look at the data that we have it over here. Oh, that's a break point everywhere. I don't know why. This is our 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 search endpoint runs. Um, uh, this is what I was telling you. Right? Anything you pass it in is going to come back as a query. But if you look at the query, all I'm sending is add. But if you look at the data, um, you know it's coming as a one five thirty six. It's going to look at that vector and then bring all the data. Just just on my local search index, not so local as a search index, and it's going to return, summarize it, and then do all the things. I think as I said, that's not a topic for this one. Right. I can I can I can fine tune this, you know, uh, uh, you know, short the summary to just one sentence. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it did that, but let me proceed and see what it does. Oh god. No, I don't see a break point, but it still still stops there. Some weird thing. OK, it did that, right? So it still uses our plugin. It uses the prompt and brings it over here. And um, I think that's the last demo I have it for you. But again, you can go back over here, download it, down, download it. That, the, that full application is coming from here. Okay, I will also leave some instructions on the PowerPoint. And this recording will be available too. <clears throat> All right, that's for now. Any questions? 